State of Education reforms to the Universal Empowerment Scholarship accounts seem unlikely now, even as a new report is released on how much the vouchers are costing the state. ABC 15's education reporter Eleni Dow teams up with data analyst Garrett Archer taking a dive into the new report and what, if anything, could be coming next for the growing program and any changes. The constant fight between Democratic and Republican leaders. There certainly should be bipartisan support for the need for some guardrails there. It is an absolute myth to say that ESAs cost more money or are costing the taxpayer money, more money than public schools. Over how much the Universal Empowerment Scholarship accounts is impacting the state, which it's at more than 75,000 students now. It's a program nonpartisan organization the Learning Policy Institute looked into as other states asked them to do so. This is something unusual about this program, that most programs that states run either have a cap in the total amount of people who can participate, or they have a cap in the cost. And that's how you control cost and make sure you don't, you know, break your, your budget. Uh, this program does it. The new report shows just how much more the state is paying for the universal expansion without any bias from either side. It's nice to have somebody independent from the parties to kind of look at the numbers and come up with their conclusion. And, and that's what this report basically is. It Data analyst Garrett Archer taking a look inside the numbers. So the Learning Policy Institute estimates that uh, universal ESA students last year cost the state about $7,800 per pupil. Charter school kids cost the state a bit more, $8,600, and district students a bit less, uh, $7,200 per pupil. So on average, the savings of more than and, uh, $860 for former charter students and about $500 more for district students. And how these students break down, only about 470 of them uh, have already attended charter schools. Uh, the next group, 16,500. Uh, those are the ones that had attended district schools. Uh, but the biggest group by far are students who were never enrolled in an Arizona public school before they became a universal ESA student. Since these students were never part of the funding, uh, they make up about $270 million uh, net increase to the state's budget. Michael Griffith with the Learning Policy Institute says the report only looked at numbers up to December last year. It's been growing on average at 350 kids each week since we stopped our study. Uh, which would actually increase the cost to about another 21 to $28 million since we stopped our study. Governor Katie Hobbs worked with Democratic lawmakers to propose reforms for the ESA program. However, State Senator Christine Marsh tells me that many of those bills are now dead. Some of those bills included requiring staff from private schools that use ESA money to get fingerprinted. Because some of, you know, at least one of them is very much about safety. I, um, I find very disappointing. However, it's not surprising, as some Republican lawmakers have said in the past, that Hobbs and the Democrats' proposal was dead on arrival. As for the budget shortfall and the additional costs of ESA to the state, Republicans continue to push that the universal program is not part of the problem. ESAs is within the K-12 budget. The ESA number was higher than projection, but the total K-12 budget number was lower than the projection. There's no doubt that, that that's a major cost that was never there before, and it's a brand new cost, that, and it's a significant new cost. In Phoenix, Eleni Dow, ABC 15, Arizona.